Hey guys, in today's video, we'll be looking at Archimedes principle. At the end, I'll show you how Archimedes principle applies to a ship as well as a submarine. So stay tuned. Let's start by defining what Archimedes principle is. Archimedes principle states that the buoyant force exerted on a body that is partially or completely immersed in a fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. Now let's look at it one by one. First, the buoyant force or an upthrust. An upthrust is a force that acts upwards on a body that is partially or completely immersed in a fluid. This means normally means water, but it can also be used in the context of air. Liquid and gases are fluids. And this is equals to the weight of the fluid displaced. This force that is pushing the object upwards when it's immersed in the water or any other fluid is equals to the weight of the fluid displaced. Let's look at how this buoyant force forms. The buoyant force is also called the upthrust. This force forms due to the difference in pressure at the top of the object and at the bottom of the object. Let's remember that pressure in liquids depends on the depth of the object. Let's look at an everyday example. If you've ever been to a pool, you know that the deeper you go, your ears get start to get more and more uncomfortable. This is because the deeper you go into the pool, then the pressure is becoming bigger and bigger. The pressure is becoming greater and greater as you go deeper and deeper. That's the relationship between pressure and depth. Depth is the distance from the surface. Let's look at this object here. So this is the depth from the surface until the area where the pressure is measured. When we look at the left and the right, at the same level, the pressure will always be the same on the left and the right. So there will always be equal pressure on the left of the object and on the right of the object because they are at the same level. P3 is always equals to P4. But vertically, when this is not as deep as the bottom, the bottom is deeper. So pressure at the bottom will be higher than the pressure at the top. P2 is more than P1 or P1 is less than P2. And this difference in pressure is what generates the upward force, the buoyant force. When we multiply this pressure by area, then we can get the buoyant force. And the direction of the buoyant force or upthrust is always upwards towards the surface of the liquid. The key phrase in Archimedes principle is that buoyant force is equals to weight of fluid displaced. Let's understand what the fluid displaced means in the first place. The fluid displaced is, let's look at this object again. When we plunge this object into a fluid, let's use water as an example here. When we plunge the object into water, the object takes up the space originally occupied by the liquid itself, by the fluid. And so this is what is known as the fluid that is displaced. The space that is taken up by the object that was originally occupied by the fluid itself. Buoyant force is equals to the weight of the fluid displaced. Remember, buoyant force is a force. So it must be equals to another force. Students always get confused with volume. Force cannot equals to volume. Force must equals to force and weight is a force. So buoyant force is equals to weight of this fluid displaced. However, it is pretty difficult for us to quantify the weight of the fluid that is displaced. Imagine if you submerge a ball in a bowl of water or marble in a bowl of water. It's very difficult to quantify the mass of the water that is displaced by the marble. However, it is much easier to quantify the volume of water that is displaced by the marble because the volume of the water that is displaced by the marble will be the volume of the marble itself. But volume is not involved in this formula. We have weight here. So mass here is referring to the mass of the fluid displaced because we are referring to weight of the fluid displaced. So this is the formula that we have. There is no volume in work. However, we can relate mass to volume and density. Remember that density is mass per unit volume. 
if we want volume to be in this equation, all we have to do is substitute mass. So if we make mass as the subject of the equation, then mass is equals to density multiplied by volume. And so, now we can replace mass with density and volume. And remember, this is mass of fluid displaced. And so the density will be the density of the fluid that is being displaced. That means here, the density of the water, not the density of the object itself. And V will be volume of the fluid displaced. Multiplied by GG is just a gravitational constant. So this is the equation that we get. From this equation, we can relate the density of the fluid displaced, meaning the density of the fluid that we place the object in, and the up thrust. When the density is high, the up thrust will also be high. When the density of the fluid displaced is low, then the up thrust will also be low. Let's look at the up thrust that is acting on a ship and how a ship floats in water. So when the ship is partially immersed in the water, this volume here that is immersed in the water is the volume of the fluid that is displaced. Since there is a fluid that is displaced, if we can get the weight of the fluid that is displaced by the ship here, then that is equal to the up thrust. That is the buoyant force, the weight of the fluid that has been displaced by the ship. This is the force that is acting upward on the ship. But don't forget there is another force acting on the ship, or in any object that has mass, and that is weight. Weight is always acting downwards. The weight of the ship is not going to change. The weight of the ship will be constant. When the weight of the ship is larger than the up thrust force, then there is going to be an acceleration downwards. The ship is going to accelerate downwards. There will be a resultant force. As the ship is moving downwards, the more and more water is going to be displaced by the ship. Because the ship is going to go deeper and deeper, the more the water that is displaced, the more the weight of the water that is displaced. And therefore, since the weight of water displaced is equal to the up thrust, then the buoyant force is going to be increasing as well. So this buoyant force will increase until it comes to a point where the buoyant force matches the weight of the ship. And this is when the ship is going to stay afloat, when the up thrust is equal to the weight of the ship. If the weight of the ship is less than the up thrust, then what is going to happen is there's going to be an acceleration upwards. The ship is going to move upwards. And this will happen until the up thrust and the weight of the ship is equal. So let's say originally we had a lot of things on the ship. The ship carried very heavy load. Once we unload it, then what is going to happen? The up thrust is going to be greater than the weight and the ship is going to go upwards. It's going to be accelerated upwards until the up thrust is equal to the force again. Let's look at Archimedes' principle application in a submarine. Now, this is a submarine. This is the front view of a submarine. A submarine contains tanks called ballast tanks. Can you see these white things at the side? These are known as ballast tanks. The function of the ballast tanks is to adjust the position of the submarine, whether it goes up or it submerges into the water or it goes down. The ballast tanks is able to draw in water or to flush out water. So water can go into the ballast tank and go out of the ballast tank. The function of this is when we add water to the ballast tanks, we are, one, we are increasing the density of the submarine because air is being replaced with water. And more importantly, this will result in an increase in the weight of the submarine. So in the case of the submarine, the weight of the submarine is modified. The weight of the submarine can change by adding water to the ballast tanks or removing water from the ballast tanks. So when the up thrust is equals, when the buoyant force is equals to the weight of the submarine, be at the same level, like here. So this is when it's at the surface. Let's say we fill the ballast tanks with half water. So now the weight of the submarine has increased. The weight is more than the up thrust. When the weight is more than the up thrust, the submarine is going to submerge. It's going to go down. It's going to accelerate downwards. As it is accelerating downwards, more and more water is going to be displaced because more and more of the submarine is going to be immersed in the water. The more the water that is displaced, the higher the weight of water that is displaced and therefore the higher the up thrust. So up thrust is going to increase until 
up thrust is equals to the weight then it will be at the same position at the same depth now let's say we filled the whole ballast tanks now the ballast tanks are full of water again the weight of the submarine is going to increase the weight of the submarine now will be higher than the up thrust of the submarine at this level so what is going to happen the submarine is going to submerge even more it's going to go down even more until the weight is balanced with the up thrust the weight is exactly the same as the up thrust then the submarine will stop going down let's say now the submarine submerged and it wants to go to the surface so what is going to happen is the ballast tanks are going to be emptied once we remove all the water from the ballast tanks now the weight of the submarine is going to become much less and so the up thrust is much greater than the weight at this point which is going to cause the submarine to accelerate upwards the submarine is going to continue to accelerate upwards until the up thrust is once again equals to the weight when the up thrust is equals to the weight the submarine is going to stay where it is at the surface the difference in the application of archimedes principle to the submarine and the ship is that in the case of the ship the weight does not change of course the weight can change if we reduce and increase the load on the ship initially but generally once the ship starts its journey its weight does not change this is completely different from the submarine the submarine is constantly changing its weight by either adding water into the ballast tanks or removing water from the ballast tanks and this will result in the changing of the depth of the submarine archimedes principle can also be applied to air can you name one or two objects that are flying in the air that applies the archimedes principle that's it for this video guys i hope you've learned something if you have please do hit the like button it really does help to support me and if you haven't subscribed yet subscribe for free education i will be posting a video at least one video a week i'll see you in the next video